My name is Chris. I'm with a company called uh, Merging Global Services. And what we do is we specialize in international VAT compliance. And the whole topic of VAT is becoming uh, particularly relevant nowadays as cross-border trade and international has really grown and we heard all of the statistics this morning around that. Um, and it's particularly important because the likes of Amazon and eBay have been speaking to me lately and they've been telling me that there's some reluctance out there amongst especially their managed merchants, their larger sellers. And the reluctance is around selling more into new countries, switching on new countries, new marketplaces, and going for it and selling more internationally. And they're fearful. They're fearful because they think VAT is complex. They think it's, 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 it's something that they can't get their head around. And there is a certain reluctance. So for eBay and Amazon, this is not good. They want companies to continue to sell as much as possible in as many markets as possible. Um, and I suppose my message today is to say that it really isn't that difficult if you take the right steps towards VAT compliance in countries. You can continue to sell and grow your business cross-border as long as you've taken certain steps to make sure that your risks are minimized. And I'm going to tell you about a particular company that actually approached us recently. They, um, they're a very well-established UK brand. Uh, I want to disclose the name of the brand, naturally, but they started off selling um, accessories through their own web store and it grew very, very quickly. And they're now one of the largest pure play uh, online um, uh, businesses in the accessories category in the UK. And they were doing very, very well. And they looked at the web analytics and they could see that they were getting a lot of visitors from Italy, um, which they hadn't realized. So what they decided to do then is they decided to sell uh, or allow selling cross-border to, uh, to Italy through their ebay.co.uk website and um, it started to really, really take off. So they started to focus a lot more on the, on the Italian market. Um, they got their web store translated and they started selling on Amazon and eBay in Italy and things started to really, really do very well for them. Uh, things actually really took off. Um, and they were making good margin, they had a look, good logistics partner, and they, um, you know, their, their product had a very good, uh, good, good market in Italy. Um, so things were going well, and they approached us though, and they said, look, we've gotten all of these letters in recently from the Italian VAT authorities, and they want their money, and we don't understand, we don't understand why this is the case. Um, to them, they thought they'd done everything correct. They collected all of the VAT on their sales, and they'd given it to the British authorities, HMRC. They charged their 20% as normal. So they couldn't understand why do the Italians want this money? I mean, we've collected it and we've paid it. So if we just pause there for a second and we kind of understand a little bit as to why the situation actually happened. You're all very familiar, I'm sure, with this particular situation whereby you're selling a product in the UK, um, your customer is also in the UK, it's delivered within the UK. In this example, for, we have £34.99. On that, there's a VAT rate of 20%, and the VAT works out at £5.83. That's pretty straightforward, we're all familiar with that. However, when it comes to cross border trade, we're not as sure. In this example, we're looking at Italy. The delivery is actually from the UK to Italy. Um, so what charge, what VAT should we charge in this particular scenario? Um, UK VAT, Italian VAT, no VAT, or it depends. And it does actually depend. Um, and it depends on what you're probably asking. Well, it depends on a couple of factors. The first is which country the um, the customer's location and which you're shipping to. And the second is what are called European distance selling thresholds. And distance selling thresholds are set by each EU country. Um, what, they, what they're designed to do is they're designed to allow you to actually sell B to C to an individual in another EU country without the need to having to get registered there. However, if after you've sold 100,000 euro worth of product to somebody in France or Germany, 
then you need to become VAT compliant in France and Germany. Um, different countries set different thresholds. Ireland, Italy, and Spain is 35,000. Denmark and Sweden, it's the equivalent in, in their own currency. So if we go back to our UK accessories company that was actually selling to Italy and that had the, all these letters that were mounting up from the Italian VAT authorities, um, it wasn't a very good situation um, because what they needed to do was they needed to, first of all, um, they needed to actually get a VAT registration in Germany and they needed to file their VAT returns to the Italian authorities and they needed to collect this money and actually pay it to the authorities, which is something that they actually hadn't been doing. Um, so, naturally enough, this caused a lot, an awful lot of upset, there was a lot of finger pointing. Um, so whose fault was it? Was it the marketing manager's fault, the e-commerce manager, the UK accountant? Who's to blame? This is not something that you want to typically deal with internally in your company when you're just trying to get on and sell and fulfill your orders in different countries. Um, ultimately, a lot of UK accountants, they're good at UK VAT. They know the ins and outs of making VAT returns in the UK. It's all done in English. It's pretty straightforward. However, when it comes to other countries, they're not so familiar with the paperwork, the red tape that comes with that. And I don't know about you, but I don't know a lot of UK accountants that speak French, German, Italian, Spanish, Finnish, all of these different languages, because all of the tax, all of the VAT tax, and the compliance around that has to be done in local language. Um, so it's easy to see how this could actually fall between the stools. Um, um, and how this all actually all came about is because the Italian authorities, they're making mystery purchases. So they're going to websites and onto eBay and onto Mar um, Amazon. And what they're doing is they're actually placing orders and they're seeing how VAT is actually treated at the point of checkout. So if they suspect that a company is selling quite a lot into their country, um, in this example, Italy, um, if they see that 20% UK VAT is actually charged on the transaction, when in fact it should have been 22%, which is the Italian VAT rate, they get suspicious and you're on their list. So, another point there, they are really actively looking at cross-border sales, transactions online, and also um, they have dedicated units set up within each of the tax authorities. Um, so HMRC would have a special unit set up of people just looking at online um, cross-border trade and really clamping down on those who are not actually declaring their VAT within the UK. The Italians are doing similar um, and, um, and they're being very, very successful as well in, um, in terms of um, bringing people to account. Um, and there's some new regulations that are coming into effect across the EU that are going to give greater powers to EU tax authorities, whereby they will have the right to be able to go on to different marketplaces and ask for sales or transaction reports from anybody selling on marketplaces as well to see, okay, have there been sales to um, the country in which you know, they're located. So there's, it's, you know, they're, at an EU level, they're really, really looking at this. Uh, very, very closely. But, if we look at our accessories company again, they were in a particular situation whereby they had to pay all of their VAT that they actually paid to HMRC. They actually had to try and get this money back from HMRC and then give it to the Italian authorities. But HMRC basically said, look, um, you know, we'll get around to that. You know, we'll, um, you know, <laughs> they'll have to wait a while, we'll get busy. Um, but the Italian authorities were like, you know, we want our money, it's our money, you legally should give it to us. Plus they were charging penalties, interest, interest on penalties. And then you have to remember as well, the UK back rate is 20%, the Italian back rate is 22%. So there was an extra 2% as well that the company had to come up with. So there was huge cash flow problems for this particular company. They had to pay this money to, to, to the Italian authorities. Um, uh, and all the while, they, you know, they had to wait and wait and wait for HMRC to try to get their money back to them. Um, and fortunately, in Meridian, we were able to kind of step in and we were able to regularize their situation. We were able to talk with the different authorities on their behalf. 
But um, it, uh, it wasn't a pretty situation, especially as well as they had to prove the date on which they actually went over the threshold in Italy. So that was a huge amount of audit work then as well. So it wasn't good. <laughs> it wasn't a pretty picture. But unfortunately, we see this time and time again, whereby they haven't taken the right steps towards VAT compliance in, a, in whatever country that they're selling it. And they end up in this particular situation because they haven't paid enough attention. Um, but I suppose my message again is that if the, if the correct steps are taken, that whole situation as I described can be completely avoided. Um, if you identify in which country you're actually selling to uh, or where the consumer is actually located, if you identify the the distance selling threshold in that particular country. If you speak with a professional and verify if you need to become compliant from a VAT point of view in that particular country, that's very good. And then if it is established that you do need to comply with VAT in that particular country, go ahead, get a VAT registration in that country, which means getting a VAT number, start charging the appropriate VAT rate in that particular country, take the money in and then do your VAT return filings to the authorities on a regular basis in that country. And that's all you need to do. Um, and if you do that correctly, there's no reason as to why you can't continue to you know, sell in other countries and to use programs such as FBA and sell in America and sell in Canada and sell throughout the world. Um, because now you know that you are compliant in all these countries, you're not running any risks. But you can just get on with selling as you as you do this.